This is rule number seven of my top 10 rules for success. And rule number seven is falling in love with making mistakes, loving, adoring your mistakes. Now, if you would like to know more about why you should be making mistakes and the more mistakes you make, the better, because you'll get closer to reaching your goals. Keep watching. So part of being successful is welcoming the mistakes that come along with taking risks. I'm gonna start this by giving you a personal story that could be viewed as a thousand dollar plus mistake. I was traveling to Maui and I had been in Maui a couple of times and I went to the Grand Waialea Hotel, which is absolutely beautiful. I went there to get a facial and when I went to get a facial, the room that I was placed into had this big huge window that opened facing the ocean and the water. You could actually hear the water. You could smell the water. You could feel the breeze. I mean, that room was absolutely awesome. And I stayed in Waialea and Waialea just, just totally uh, uh, is part, like I'm part of Waialea. Waialea just defines me. Everything about Waialea, I, I find absolutely beautiful. And so I thought, my thought was that I would just love to live in Maui and that I would get licensed in the state of Maui as an esthetician so that I can move to Maui and work. And in order to work in Hawaii, you need to be uh, licensed by the state of Hawaii uh, for aesthetics. So what do I do? Well, right away I go and I start researching what it would take to get licensed in the state of Maui. And while I'm doing all this, everything is just the whole process of getting licensed and having my dogs. I had three dogs at the time going through the quarantine process, which I did at home and having all of the documentation through the Department of Agriculture in Hawaii to perfection for my three dogs. All of that was so easy. It came easy. There were like no, it wasn't difficult at all. So every step that I took validated that I was going in the right direction. And all of that cost me about a, a grand, probably a little more, okay? So after my dogs were licensed and had gone through the agricultural system to enter the state and I was licensed to practice in Maui, I go back and I take another trip. And this time when I went there, there were a couple of things that, that hit me, I don't wanna say in the wrong way, but just hit me in a way that wasn't totally me, in a big way that wasn't me. What were those things? Okay, one, the weather. Uh, like the third time I went there, I was in my room and I was going to go out for the day and I stepped out of my room and I took about 10 steps and it was so uncomfortably hot and muggy and, and humid, I couldn't go any further. I was so uncomfortable and so I turned around and went back to the room. And so as I was in the room, I started to get on the uh, internet and do some research. And I thought maybe I would go and look at some places to live, to check out the real estate and see what was there. So very quickly, I realized that most places in 
Maui or in Hawaii in general, do not take dogs. The way people in Hawaii treat animals when it comes to neglect and abuse, I'll just come on here and say it, is not up to the standard that it is on the mainland. And me, being an animal rights activist and a vegan, who is emotionally charged by cases of neglect and abuse in a bad way, okay, in a bad way, it's not in a good way, all right, because I don't put all that energy into being angry, so I'm not an angry vegan animal activist, I'm not that, and I don't put all of that angst into being sad and depressed. But living in Maui and having to see the way dogs are treated, okay, and some of their rules at the shelter, and I even visited the shelter, would be very, just put it this way, that would be highly difficult for me to live in that type of situation and see, you know, chickens and all kinds of animals around me being neglected. It is now in Los Angeles where I live in, in a neighborhood that compared to Hawaii is of the highest standards of taking care of animals. The shelters know who I am because I am the one who is the voice of the animals in LA. So if I moved to Maui, ah, that would be a huge challenge for me, right? So there we have two huge negatives. The first thing that I learned was the weather. And I don't know if I can be really happy living in, um, you know, in a Waialea or even in Kihei because of the weather. So then you wanna move up country where it's cooler and it rains, which I like the rain, I like the coolness, but there are more bugs. <laughs> you don't understand. Me and bugs, any kind of bugs. I don't care if it's a fly, I don't care what kind of bugs it is, just me and bugs do not cohabitate together. I do not like to live my life with bugs at all. And so then I, you know, as I'm realizing that these three things that should have been researched and discovered prior to me spending a thousand dollars to do what I had to do to get to Maui, all of this preliminary research but it wasn't done, and I didn't know about it until afterwards. So that, that is a thousand dollar lesson that gets me closer to my goal, that clarifies for me what's important to me. Because prior to, to doing everything that I did to move to Maui, I didn't think that weather was that important to my well-being. I didn't think, I didn't realize that there were these big cockroaches that fly and that people live with cockroaches in their house. And it's okay because you're living in paradise and they're okay with it. But see, I wouldn't be okay with it. And then I would have to deal with all the chemicals for killing them and, and all of this stuff. And my point is those were great, great mistakes that I made that got me closer to clarifying me, me, who I, want, who I am, what I want, where I wanna be, and that's what you have to do with your mistakes. Every day when you wake up, you should wake up and say, come on, come on, let me make more mistakes, because if you make 50 mistakes, those are 50 things you know are not gonna get you closer to your goals. It's the same thing as, you know, that list that, you know, people say, you know, your to-do list. And many of us, including myself, have had to-do lists every day. You have a to-do list. But you know what's more important of a to-do list 
is a not to-do list. Because when I have a to-do list and it says something on that list about getting on the internet and I get on the internet and then all of a sudden I'm checking my email and then it's Facebook and then it's YouTube and then it's, you know, you're going down this hole and three hours later you're like, wait a minute, what was I supposed to do? So you you end up spending a lot of your time doing things that should be on your not to-do list. And that is how you get closer to your to-do list, is by having a not to-do list. And the same thing with making mistakes. You want to make mistakes. You don't want to dwell on your mistakes. You want to learn from them and move forward in a different direction. Mistakes are wonderful tools that will guide you towards your goal in a direction that you may not have thought of if you didn't make that mistake. So the sooner you make the mistake, the sooner you'll be closer to your goals. So I hope that this clarified how making mistakes is one of the best things you can do and there isn't an entrepreneur, there isn't a successful person out there who doesn't love mistakes. This is Moonlight Mason and do subscribe to my channel. If you like my content and you want more of this, do subscribe. I hope to see you again. So. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.